pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, hey, Mrs. Mayor, if you do the roll call, please. Yes, I will. Gary Dunlap. Here. Tom Cruise. Here. Alex Ockrey. He must Cheryl. be excused. He excused. Okay, Cheryl Hancock. Here. Anise Jagzinski. Here. Kate Mayer, I'm here. Tim Menninger. Is excused. And Lisa Collins. Here. Okay, so with six of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Board norms and reflections, um, board norms are in our packets. Just refer to those if you have any questions and um, maybe take a second to look as we are going through the approval of the agenda, just as a reminder. Approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed. Excuse me, just one minute. <laughs> oh. Oh, alrighty. Sorry, I'm ringing bells here. <laughs> I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes to the agenda at this time? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time period per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. Uh, Cheryl, I have this check from the Knights of Columbus. We have a Tuscan Road Drive in the spring, and uh, we donate that to the special education. And Mr. Brown, if we could get a picture, a photo, that would be wonderful. I saw you coming the, this evening, Francis followed you in, and I thought, oh, I hope this is Tootsie Roll time. So, <laughs> very generous donation, and I'll hand this off to Mr. Clark to make sure it gets deposited appropriately. Is there anyone else who would wish to address the board at this time? Seeing none, then we will move to reports and discussion. Student activity account, Mr. Miller. Each year, the student activity groups are asked to uh, present their um, individual account purpose forms, and we have received five of those, and those were properly completed, timely, and so you have before you a uh, request to accept those student activity accounts. Okay. Any questions? Okay, seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thanks for the report. Elementary staffing increase recommendation, Dr. Carlson. Very similar to the last board meeting, as you recall, the board was asked to consider approval and did approve the flexibility to add up to four positions. We are back to the board um, for your consideration of having the flexibility of looking at increasing up to one position at this time. I wanted to update the board that since the last board meeting, we did, we have moved forward in um, accessing all four of those positions, and again, we. We've monitored those closely, and uh, the team felt it was appropriate to move forward, so we have done that. So we are asking consideration that if needed uh, in the coming days and weeks that we would be able to increase by another 1.0 position for our elementary and regular classroom sections. Okay, are there any questions? Thank you for the update. Then administrative supervisor base salary and the Holman Educators Association base wage agreements. 
You have, yeah, you have both of these, and I can just kind of present both of them, but uh, they're separate items, of course, separate um, agreements and, um, and rates and so on. The administrator and supervisory base um, salary would be, uh, that group would be looking at a total base salary um, increase for the group, as a group, of about 1.489% to be distributed as a as a consistent dollar amount across each member of the group. And so that would be consistent, again, working off of the board's allowed um, budget of 1.563, as we have worked with all our employee groups consistently with that. Moving, and I can take questions individually too, but I'll move on to the HGA. Um, we, you don't officially have a signed agreement this evening from the HEA, but I did take a phone call earlier today from the president confirming that it was a successful ratification vote by the membership. And so I would bring that uh, to the board this evening to advance uh, that recommendation. There are actually two different issue papers associated with this one recommendation. And we did that, we did it last year as well. And we, we look at separating the base wage uh, negotiated amount in this case from that lane movement which is unique to our teachers group um, the lane movement again is for that recognition of, edu of educational credits um, that we have uh, for a long time made a commitment to so we did we did separate those um, to kind of talk about each of those separately. So with the teacher, with the HEA, you would have an ending base wage increase of approximately 1.289%. And again, that is out of that, again, overall budgeted amount of 1.563%. So the difference there, again, would be the uh, cost for the lane movement recognition. Um, this is to be distributed um, as a consistent dollar amount across each member of that group or each cell um, on the on the schedule. <clears throat> so that's a very quick summary. Um, be happy to respond to questions that you may have. Otherwise, both of these are on the consent agenda as well this evening for your consideration. Yeah, I just um, I didn't realize you're on the on the consent mm -hmm. agenda. And being I'm still the newbie, I was just still learning. But I am. I'm always, one reason I ran for the board, I'm always looking for ways to improve our, how we teach the students. And I do think the, um, some of the ways we can do that, I just don't know, this, this is a lot of money, and I do think that providing with the teachers, I think they are hit the, where the rubber hits the road a lot, and I don't know, like for the administrators and supervisors, where, where are the, um, what are the parameters that we have? And, and again, I am kind of behind the horse here a little bit, so I, I apologize for that. But uh, where are the parameters we have that we evaluate these supervisors and so we can know they're doing their job and, and, and we can say, yes, we can confidently, let's give them this raise because we're moving forward in the right direction and Coleman's doing the right thing. I just don't really have those semantics in front of me and being, I, I'm not involved in this negotiations and I'm certainly not qualified to say this person should make this amount of money and this person should not make that sort of money. But I think it's a question we need to constantly ask ourselves as a board. Um, and I just, that's all, when I've reviewed this and it like even mentions with the Holman, with the teachers, it says here the idea supporting higher pay and I agree with the teachers because I think the teachers have a lot they, they take on I, I think there's other ways we could incentivize them a little bit. Um, there's a lot of different ways we can make this, make this, this, this cart move forward. And I just don't always know if this is exactly the way we need to do this. Um, but again, I'm still learning. So um, I don't have enough information to make an educated no or yes decision. I'm gonna go with the board if, uh, with the group, but I still think we, it's something we need to constantly revisit and I would like to in the future, I'm going to learn a lot more on what goes into this, especially with the supervisors and administrators and how we're accountability and where are the parameters that we're judging 
besides, in my opinion, this is just the way we always do it, and that's just not good enough for me. And the meeting is, it looks like it's going to be a brief meeting this evening, so let me just take a couple minutes to respond, Tom, for you and for the public since you've asked this question. Um, as far as evaluating, I think all of our supervisors and administrators are evaluated on an annual basis, correct? Yeah. Yes, supervisors and, and administrators. Teachers, there's a different system because of longevity and they're reviewed and, and um, observed annually, but it may not be the formal type of evaluation each and every year. But as far as how we set the um, wages, it's usually done at time of hire. And then um, we, what we do is as we're going out, we look at market, we look at comparable comparables to area districts. We look at the job duties and titles, and I think you found out on the DPI web page, there's a lot of statistics you can find, mm -hmm. and so similar positions in, in similar districts, so we look at all of those things when we hire. But you're right, we have done a lot of things because that's the way it's always been done. So, for example, one committee we have right now that's meeting is the um, compensation model for the HEA. So we are looking at different ways within our educators at least um, how can we appropriately compensate them for what they're doing. And so that's really, we're like gonna dig down, you know, the, the bare bones there and, and talk about some of those things there. So very timely, we're, we're, we are taking on some of those things. Um, once we accomplish the educators, maybe we'll look at other groups and, and take a look too because, you know, there's, in a, as the X generation, one thing I'm learning, Generation X, is they are looking at things in addition to financial compensation. They are looking mm -hmm. at time off and vacation and those kind of things are as enticing and important to them to spend time with their families and doing things. So I think we, it, we owe it to the district to continually look and improve and, and we are in some areas and not all. I'm not surprised <laughs> at all. Really, I'm not that you say that because I, I know this district is very forward thinking in that regard. But uh, you know, specifically you mentioned not necessarily pay. I mean, there's other things I think we have some really educate, talented educators that might be used more effectively in other ways. And, and I'm sure you're digging down into it. So I appreciate that is you. our challenge as a challenge of the leadership is to um, reward our talent that we have because the people who are successful is what drives this district to success. So thank you. So, and as indicated, these items are on our consent agenda this evening. So without further delay the next item is the consent agenda we have six items I think um, and personnel report financial claims and reports second reading of the competitive beverage and food sales um, policy elementary staffing increase recommendations and administrator supervisor base wage salary and Holman Educators Association base wage agreement um, unless someone wants to pull one of those out, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I would so move. Is there a second? I second it. Okay, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Then moving on to board member reports and discussion. I'll call on board members in their order of the roll call and please present any comments or committee reports that you have. Mr. Dunlap. I have nothing this evening. Okay, Mr. Cruz. Um, my daughter in law is going to have a baby January 30th. All um, right. <laughs> Grandpa. Yeah. Is that your first? Yes. Wonderful, congratulations, congratulations. <laughs> um, Mrs. Dragozinski. I have nothing. Uh, Mrs. Mayor. Just a reminder that tomorrow is the um, huge trauma conference that's going on. Uh, La Crosse School District and La Crosse County is sponsoring that. I'm gonna attend, I know a few teacher friends from a few districts are going. I'm really looking forward to that. It's gonna be a big movement in the next, uh, one to three years so I'm anxious to learn a lot more about that um, one of the stats I remember hearing is that if trauma were eliminated from a child's life 80% of our prison population would not be there oh, really that many uh, yeah 
And trauma, of course, includes all kinds of things. But um, like I said, it's, it's on the forefront, and I know our district will be on top of that. Um, so I'm really excited about it, and whatever info I get, I'll, I'll shoot out to the rest Please of do. you. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Collins, Mrs. Collins. I don't have anything to add. Okay. Well, I just have one, just our Personnel and Governance Committee is meeting this Wednesday. Um, so we are regrouping and, get, and going, uh, moving forward. I know we have, um, so later on we're going to be talking about the calendar, meeting calendar and topics for 2014 is later policy administrative rule review cycle. Um, and board meeting, ref well, I'm sorry, board meeting reflection is there too. But the, the two, 10.4 and 10.5, um, I think there are some materials in our packets related to those. So if you want to take a look, if there's any comments or questions about any of those. Um, we, in our red folder correspondence, we did receive a copy of the thank you for the focus group. The focus group meeting that was held recently was exactly for the compensation model group. Um, we have surveyed our educators on what about the current system is, uh, they find meets their needs and what doesn't meet their needs. And then we had a um, work with, working with a group, um, had a focus group. Dr. Carlson and I were not there. No one was there from the district. It was led by a, a neutral per party. Um, but to seek information and pull information from the community about how do they feel our educators are being compensated and what sorts of criteria should we use when we compensate them. So some of the very thing, things we've been discussing here this evening um, were part of that focus group. And then I know there was a WASB Region 6 notice of election and then the um, Village of Holman letter. And I just want to briefly mention that Dr. Carlson and I and Mr. Clark, we attended a uh, meeting this afternoon with Scott at the Village Hall regarding the TIF district. And I know there is um, a packet in there in our folder. Um, if you are interested in getting a copy of that, Dr. Carlson could send you a copy or scan it. Christina could scan it and send a copy to everyone. You know, the TIF district, I think, has some very exciting components to it, some of the things that they want to do for the, in the village, within the village limits. Um, but also there are some consequences um, to a school district when you have a TIF district as a tax and incremental funding or a district. Um, and part of the um, plan is for residential. So as 40 to 60 new homes are being built and bringing with them students, there's a potential that our, in, our revenue, our tax revenue on those 40 to 60 homes would not increase. That's kind of the component because the taxes will increase to those property owners, but that would go then to the village to help um, offset some of the costs that they of infrastructure and things that they are doing um, within the TIF. So you know we look at our numbers and what did we say, Jay? 100 to 200 students it could mean between 40 and 60 homes, depending on what. And it could also have an impact on us of um, if that area is developed. It's right near Remington Hills. Um, there's a little area then the areas to the north of it could also be developed, which could then result in a number of new homes that while not in the TIF, it would bring with it the tax revenue, could have implications for us as far as building because the numbers, again, I don't remember the numbers of houses. Was it up to 200? To about 200. Up to about 200 more homes. So if you multiply that by 2.5, and they were estimating three, six, and nine years. So within nine years, we could have that many more students in our district at all various levels. Wow. So it is something for us to look at. And there are other areas, uh, you know, as the economy is getting better, there are other areas um, within the district that could possibly <coughs> see um, growth and interest and development. However, 
this is kind of an inviting um, thing. If that is part of it, then for the developer, it is kind of intriguing and inviting for them. So um, as the liaison to the municipalities, I'll serve on that uh, committee. And I think we do have a meeting before that committee meets, so take a look at it. And we won't vote on it, but we probably will have some discussion on it. Um, as far as our thoughts because it could have some very positive things for us but it also could have some implications I'm not saying ne necessarily bad but it's some implications for us um, as a school district so so then board meeting schedule August 25th is our next board meeting and September we meet on the 8th and then we have our super meeting on the 22nd beginning with a board meeting at 6, our budget hearing at 7, and then the annual meeting at 8. And um, are there any questions about anything? Okay, then I would entertain a motion to go into executive session, Mrs. Mayor. Oh, oh Dr. Carlson, I'm sorry, I just briefly mentioned it. Did you want to talk about that? If I, if I may. Please do. Thank you. Uh, 10.4, you have in your board packet uh, just a copy, um, a PDF copy of the board meeting topic calendar. And to just share with you that this, we've looked at a different format, more electronically, that is going to be able to be sorted and hopefully utilized and more user-friendly by those of us who, who use this quite frequently and uh, apply this. So as you look at this, please know you don't have, because of the document that's in your board packet, the the ability to manipulate it and sort and but that's really a large purpose of this and so like in the first column it, I think your copy has started a list with month number one well that's January and uh, but we can sort it by month and then the next column <laughs> it's either the first meeting of the month or the second meeting of the month and so we can do some sorting there so it's a different look um, mm -hmm. We want you to, you know, if you have a need to utilize this, that's great. I tell you, we use it behind the scenes quite, quite a bit, so in our planning. But I, this is more of an awareness um, for you tonight as far as that. I'd be happy to um, <coughs> respond to any questions later as well on that. The second um, is 10.5, the Board Policy Administrative Rule Review Cycle. This is something that we have annually presented to the board. And again, it's something that uh, actually we have a policy on this um, where I present to the board my recommendations of, we, we classify it as must do, could do, and should do. Or uh, must do, should do, and could do. And so um, just so you know, as you look through those, we have them separated by committees as they have been assigned. and. Um, this is not unusual for some committees to have what might appear a year with very few that are scheduled. It does not mean that you, that group can't work a little ahead to perhaps offset the following year a little bit. But my, what I've done is the must do's have been any prior years up to <coughs> this year. And then the should do would be 2015 and then 2016 is a could for those groups who may want to. And again, this is just a recommendation of how I've assigned those dates. So if you have questions, I know, board, I know the committee chairs will want to give this uh, certainly uh, great attention as they work with us on planning. But be happy to take any questions you have on that. Thank you. Am I, don't, am I the only one? But I had a duplicate Me too. document. So if Christina could send that out, mine was yeah. the same as 10.4 10 10 4 and 10.5. 10 okay. So if you want to just send that out to us. But I think that is helpful, especially mm -hmm. for um, committee chairs to take a look at that and um, take a look at your committee at the must um, and should items that need policies that need to be reviewed for the upcoming year and then if there are any items extra such as student achievement and learning is looking at class size mm -hmm. that would be something out of the ordinary that you know would be included so okay 
So then I would <clears throat> entertain a motion to go into executive session. Mrs. Um, Meyer, Mayor? I would so move. Um, would you read it to, for the legal? Absolutely. Thank you. Be it resolved that the Board of Education moves to executive session as per Wisconsin Statute 19.851C for considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility in this case for the purpose of considering, reviewing employee compensation, and for reviewing the district administrator's performance evaluation. Is there a second? A second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. Ms. Mayor, if you would do the roll call, please. Absolutely. Gary Dunlap? Yes. Tom Cruise? Here. Cheryl Hancock? Yes. Anita Jagosinski? Yes. Kate Mary? Yes. Tim Menninger is excused. Lisa Collins? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we will take about a five minute break and reconvene at 7.30, I would note. Yeah.